Alright, question mark. Landing lights, strobe lights, backups are set, breakers are in, flaps to take off, fuel pump on, prop full, mixture a little richer, fullest tank, they're both the same, and trim to take off. Alright, everybody's good. Stateful traffic, 526 outside, taking off uh, runway 10, be departing to the east, Stateful. Today we're, uh, we're going to do a little experiment and uh, the diamond. We're going to try the impossible turn, which is lo uh, losing an engine on takeoff, trying to turn back and make it to the runway. Uh, a lot of people have tried this, a lot of people have failed, and you can imagine what happens. Not, not good things. So I'm going to do this at altitude. I'm not going to do it on the ground. And my quest is to find how much altitude above ground level, AGL, I would need to actually have a chance at making turn back. That's a valuable piece of information. Um, if you know that number ahead of time, which I, I don't, I've never tried this in this plane. Imagine that after all these years. Um, it helps your decision making. If you lose an engine immediately, you know, okay, I'm X amount of feet above the ground. I can or I can't try that. Oops. Um, if you don't have enough altitude, you need to find something straight ahead. You don't want to try to turn too low try to turn too steep or too slow, you'll end up spinning, you'll end up running into the ground. Um, so this is a good experiment and every airplane is going to be different. So whatever plane you fly, this might be valuable. If you don't feel comfortable doing it on your own, you can go up with an instructor and get a nice safe altitude and practice this a little bit and just see what, uh, what altitude you need. I'm guessing I can do it at 500 feet. I don't know that, that's just a guess, but that's what we're going to find out. It's a little, little bit bumpy today. It's not much wind, but it's a little bumpy. So that may factor a little bit, but it's not always smooth when you fly. So let's uh, let's give it a shot. I'm just gonna go out here and find a nice area where there's no traffic, no obstacles uh, that I have to contend with. We do have a cloud deck above us, so I can't go much higher and try this, uh, but I'm at right now I'm at 3,000 feet, so that's fine. Uh, my methodology is gonna be, I will center up my CDI so the needle is centered and pointing up, and that's going to, I'll just find a point to do that, make it work. That will simulate my runway. I'll pick a floor, I think probably 3,000 feet or so, simulate taking off from 3,000 feet as if it is ground level. At 500 AGL, or above that level, 3,500, I'll pull the power back to idle. I'm then gonna take a, a few seconds before I start doing anything because I think studies have shown that if something really happens to you, it takes a minute for you to digest what's happening. And there's kind of that oh moment that you have to get through, unpucker your uh, your behind, and, and process what you're supposed to do. So to be realistic, I'm going to give it a count of like five. And then we'll attempt in a glide to turn around, get back on our course needle before we run out of our 500 feet of altitude. Well, I have been, like I say, I appreciate the support. Our subscriber count is uh, is growing. I appreciate that. And uh, believe it or not, just you hitting that like or subscribe button helps the channel out a bunch. YouTube uses algorithms to tell who or how many people to show the videos to. And the more people that like it and subscribe, the better off they do and the more the channel can grow. It's not a money maker by any stretch. Um, I enjoy doing it and I hope, I hope you get something out of it. There's not a lot of people teaching in DA-40s. Uh, although it's one of the more popular training planes, I guess it's it's new. So hopefully you've got something out of this and um, and all the other videos I've put up. And if you would just hit that like and subscribe, that would that would be great for the channel. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this. I've centered up my course line. It is a from, not a two, but that doesn't matter for what we're doing. Needles are centered. I'm at 3,000 feet. Start slowing her down a little bit. What I want to do is get down to a takeoff speed. It is a little bumpy today, so I am having a bit of an issue staying on course. Okay, so I've maneuvered into position. I'm at 3,000 feet. I'm slowing her down a little bit. I've got my CDI centered on a uh, course, so that simulates my runway heading. I'm slowing down. The wind is coming from the right, or my right. That's pretty important. When you do this, you want to turn into the wind, because if you turn with the wind, it's going to push you farther away from the runway. You're going to have farther to come back. So. 
turning into the wind. It's only three knots, so that should be bad. We're going to slow her down. Better on course, 3,000. And what I'm going to do is get her down to first notch of flaps. I want to simulate a takeoff. And I usually climb out in the mid-70s, so we're going to get her down to there. Okay, there's that. So we're going to go full power, and we're taking off. All right, we're climbing. We're almost to 500. And there's 500. One, two, three, four, five. All right, can we come back? All right, we're going to maintain 73 as our best glide speed. Not too steep a turn, because that raises your stall. I'm going to leave those flaps right in. I'm not going to change any moment. I got to get back to my CDI needle. I've made a 180 degree turn, but I'm still not lined up with the runway. All right, and there's 3,000. So I was close. You can see my needle, though, is not centered. So I would be off to the left of the runway at 500 feet. So let's try 600 feet. I'm going to leave flaps in. I'm at 3,000. I'm just going to get back on my course. And actually, let's try 700 because I actually think I went 100 over. I think I topped that out at 600 feet. I'll have to check the video, but I think it might have been a little high there. Okay, there's our course line. 75 is good. First notch of flaps. All right, full power. Let's climb to 3,700. We're taking off. All right, the wind is now coming a little bit from our right, so we will make a right turn. All right, there's 36. And 37. One, two, three, four, five. All right, down to idle. S glide, 73. Let's start going around. Thank you, a little slow. We gotta let the nose down a little bit. All right, and there's our turn. And we're on course line. And I'm at 3,200 feet. So we could make it from there. 200 foot buffer, come around be no problem landing. So that is my benchmark. Anything below 700 feet AGL, I'm going straight ahead. All right. So I tried the CDI method. I tried a different method this time. I found a nice run of power lines here. Nice straight. Could use a highway. I'm going to use that as my runway. I'm going to use the same methodology. I'm going to get down to 3,000 feet. I'm going to slow the plane down. All right, there's 3,000. If you can see out the front, there is my runway. Right. Now where I get first notch of flaps in, the center of my heading bug on my runway, get up to 3,000 feet. Right base, runway two, traffic, head to your right, and 2,900 is another seven on there. All right, so there's 3,000 feet. So now I'm going to go full power, and I'm going to go to 700 feet was my number from the last test. It's coming straight at me, so that's... Uh, I, don't have to, I can turn either direction I want. That's a good simulation. All right, and there is 700 feet. All right, power's going away. One, two, three, four, five. All right, start my turn. S glide 73, nose down a little bit. Nose down, 73. There's my power lines. I see them. Remember, I got to turn past 180 degrees. Fast on that. I left my flaps down and we're at 3,200 feet and I'm back over my power lines. So that would be a nice altitude. And that confirms the other test that I had 200 feet there. I think 700 feet is going to be my number. Could pull it off maybe even at five, but that's a little close, I think. 700 is the number. Confirmed. Two different methods for testing came up with the same number. Enjoyed this video? Remember, like, subscribe, and I'll find the next one.